Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to prove Proposition 1 from Unified Geometry. That is, that there exist at least six distinct lines and four distinct planes, along with the four points that are guaranteed by the existence uh, postulate that we have given. And from these basic incidence postulates, we'll be able to prove that we have this. And actually, we can't prove that there's any more than this with what we have so far, because we're going to show that there's a model with exactly uh, four points, six lines, and four planes that satisfies all the postulates and definitions that we have before. So remember from last uh, video that I went back over these things. And in red, you can see the, the list of postulates, these nine postulates that we have here. And notice postulate three says we start with the existence of four non-collinear, non-coplanar points. Uh, we're going to start with that, and then from that and the combination of these other um, postulates, we're going to be able to prove that we're going to be able to get some lines and planes, six lines and four planes specifically. Um, so we start with the first statement. There exist at least four non-coplanar, non-collinear points. Let's go ahead and give them names, A, B, C, and D. And that's just a restatement of postulate three. Step two, there are six pairs of these points, the set AB, the set AC, the set AD, the set B and C, the set B and D, and the set C and D. That's just statement one, the, taking those four points and the fact that we know that they're distinct and just, uh, just counting and organizing them. Okay. For each of these pairs, there exists a unique line connecting the two points. So there exist lines line AB, the line containing AC, the unique line containing A and D, unique line containing B and C, line BD, and line CD. Now, to use that, we first of all have the pairs of points here that are pairs of distinct points, and then postulate six. Postulate six, I didn't repeat it here because it's just right here on the previous page. Given any two distinct points, there exists exactly one line that contains both of them. So notice this one says if we have two points, then we get a line, uh, exactly one line containing them. So here we have two points, A and B. There's exactly one line containing them, so we can use this notation. Remember, we only use this notation when postulate 6 is true. Another way to say postulate 6 is we say two points determine a line. Now, this, uh, how many lines is this? Well, I mean, we don't know for sure at this point. Potentially, this is six different lines, uh, but potentially... So a couple of these could be the same. So let's see about that. Suppose two of these are lines are the same. Doesn't matter which two we pick. Let's say A, B, and A, C. Now obviously they have point A in common, but could they be the same line? And we're going to suppose that this is, is true. This is actually false. But we're going to suppose it's true and then show that we reach a contradiction later on. This is what's called a proof by contradiction. Okay. Now, D is not collinear with A, B, and C. Well, we know that's, that's true because of the, of the hypothesis up here that these, there is some set of four points which are non-collinear, non-coplanar. So uh, these, there's no line containing all four of these and no plane containing all four of these specific points. Now, there may be possibly more than four points on a line or more than four points in a plane, which is certainly true in Euclidean geometry. But it may not be true for, say, a finite geometry. But what we do know is for these four points, there's no one single plane containing them and no single line containing them all. So D is not collinear with these two. So uh, there exists exactly one plane containing the points A, B, and D. Plane A, B, D. Okay. Now, if A, B, line A, B, and A, C are the same line, we know that line AB is in the plane ABD. Why? Um, if postulate 8, if two points lie in the plane, which we've already established in, point, in, 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 uh, in 6, right? So we're actually using statements, statement 6 here. Statement uh, this was statement five, excuse me. This is statement six.
So statement six says we have some points that are in the plane, specifically um, A and B are in this particular plane. Then the line containing them lies in the plane. Well, if AC is part of that line, that would make A, B, and C uh, coplanar with D as well, but that contradicts our first statement that A, B, C, and D are non-coplanar. Okay, so that means you can't have line AB the same as line AC. All right, well, uh, this was arbitrarily chosen pair of lines, so, so in fact, each of these lines is uh, distinct from each other. Okay, so therefore there are at least six distinct lines, and no three of the four point, points, A, B, C, and D, are collinear. Now again, that's not saying that we don't have some set of three points that are collinear, or even more, but it's saying that those any three of those four points. Now, we can go, go here and say there exists planes A, B, C, plane A, B, D, plane A, C, D, and plane B, C, D. So remember that means that it's a, a unique plane that contains points A, B, and C. It may or may not contain other points. And to do that, we will we will use uh, statement A that these lines are distinct. But then uh, we'll actually use the second part that no three of the four points are collinear. We'll use that. And along with postulate seven, it says given any three distinct non-collinear points, there exists exactly one plane containing them. So any group of these four points, take any three of them, there's going to be exactly one plane containing the three. Now, again, this has potentially four different planes, but what if any of these planes were the same? Well, if the planes are, are uh, not distinct, then, um, then that would make A, B, C a D coplanar, but that's a contradiction. So in fact, all four planes are distinct. So what do we prove? We prove that there exist at least six distinct lines and four distinct planes. And of course, we were given at least four uh, distinct points. And it turns out, we, we uh, even though in Euclidean geometry, we do get infinitely many points on a line, infinitely many points in a plane, infinitely many lines in a plane, uh, there actually is a geometry that, uh, that satisfies all the, the uh, postulates that we have so far that only consist of four lines, uh, four points, six lines, and four planes. And here it is. The set of points is A, B, and C, A, B, C, and D. The set of lines are any two pair, uh, any set of two of those. One, two, three, four, five, six of those. Set A and B, the set A and C, the set A and D the set B and C, the set B and D, and the set C and D. So lines in this geometry have exactly two points. And the planes are uh, A, B, sets of any three of these points, A, B, C, A, B, D, A, C, and D, and B, C, and D. So we can actually build a model with these here, and we can build, we have built a model, and we can illustrate it like this. Uh, one way we can visualize this is with the um, embedding it in three-dimensional uh, Euclidean space. We can put a tetrahedron that's like uh, triangles on four faces. Each face is a plane, and each edge is a line, and the vertices are the points. And, well, not quite. Um, when I say each edge is a line, what I meant is two vertices that are on the same edge form a line. The line is just the two points, nothing between. So the line AB is indicated by this edge here. It's part of the Euclidean line that contains A and B, uh, but it's actually just those two points. And then uh, here's there's a line A and C, B and C, B and D, A and D here. And each face here well, again, not not the Euclid, not the the face here, but uh, be a Euclidean plane that contains that face would contain the plane here. The plane, however, is only the three points B, A, B, and D here, for example. And so, um, 
For example, one way to get this would be to graph a uh, tetrahedron would be graph the points, the origin, 100, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1 as uh, you know, A, B, C, and D in Euclidean three space. And that's exactly what I did uh, here in, uh, in GeoGebra. And you can see uh, by manipulating this around, you can kind of see the different faces, the different sides of this, thinking of this as a three dimensional thing. But in reality, we're just talking about just the four points as being all that there is. Okay, so four points, uh, six lines, four planes. Okay, now if we want to have more points or lines or planes than this, we're going to need something else. We're going to need uh, to add one or more postulates to our list to extend this out so that we can't have just a finite geometry. What if we want an infinite infinite geometry of geometries? With infinite point, infinitely many points, like we do in Euclidean geometry, we will need some more postulates in our lists somehow, and uh, we're going to get to that next week or in our next playlist. We're going to look at some other types of finite geometries in the next couple of playlist, a uh, couple of videos in this playlist, though. Come back for some more later.